Welcome to the Nanostat firmware install tutorial. The goal of this tutorial is to take the code for the Nanostat on GitHub, download it to your computer, and then transfer it to the Nanostat circuit board. The Nanostat is a wireless electrochemistry platform for analytical chemistry sensing biology. The description in detail is given in this paper. And to actually get a circuit board made, there's a separate video tutorial. So let's get into it for the firmware. We're going to be starting with a fresh Linux machine with stock uh, Linux. So the first few minutes <coughs> are just setting up the virtual machine. We'll be using Ubuntu and the ISO is already downloaded <coughs> and will be used to spin up this virtual machine using VMware Workstation Player. Both the ISO and the work Workstation Player are free software. So we have to create a folder for the virtual machine and you don't have to do a virtual machine you can use your own regular machine um, <clears throat> but this just shows how to go from absolutely nothing on your computer to getting the firmware compiled and installed. So I'm just giving it, um, I'm just setting up the virtual machine here. <clears throat> and we're just going to go and install the stock Ubuntu and use all the default configurations. So this is sped up. It takes about 10 minutes to install. Now that it's installed, which I sped up a thousand times <clears throat> um, it's gonna even though it's a brand new install it's gonna pop up say it needs to update itself so once it pops up the update notification we'll click accept and we'll allow it to do the updates here it comes install the updates now So this takes a few minutes. This is also sped up. And we restart the machine. Now even though it said it's updated, we're going to run a sudo apt-get update and sudo apt-get upgrade just to make sure it's the latest version of the stock Ubuntu operating system. Once that happens, we'll restart and we'll have a brand new stock Ubuntu machine and we can work from there. So you can do this on a regular computer if you want. So the installation is complete. So we're going to need Git, which is the <coughs> program that allows us to transfer the software that's already on GitHub. So we install that here. Now we need to install Visual Studio Code, <coughs> which is the IDE I recommend you use. It allows to compile and upload the firmware. So we have to download <coughs> it from the Visual Studio Code website. We download the Debian package, open it with the software installer, and install it. This will take a minute. Click install. Type your password. These commands will also be um, described in the readme file on the github. So Visual Studio Code is installed now. I'm just going to make a shortcut to the taskbar for convenience. Start it up. 
Now within Visual Studio Code we want to install a package called Platform IO. So we go over to the left set of boxes and in the search for extensions we type in Platform IO, click install. It will download that Platform IO software. It'll start to install it. You can see on the bottom right it says installing and now we've run into a problem. It doesn't like the version of Python. So we check the option and there's a solution to install some Python software. So we copy that command to the command line and run it. So now hopefully Platform IO is happy and we have the right version of Python installed and it can continue its installation of the Platform IO extensions. You can see on the bottom right it says Platform IO installer installing. So it's done. It says restart. Reload. So we'll reload Visual Studio Code. Any moment now. Okay, so now we have the Visual Studio Code <clears throat> installed and we want to download the firmware from GitHub. So we clone the GitHub repository and we have to type in the URL for where the software is hosted. So we can just search for Burke Lab, GitHub, Nanostat and there's all the repos. So all we need to do is copy that <coughs> URL that has all the software that we need for the nanostat. So we just paste that into the Visual Studio Code. It asks you where you want to put the files. So you give it a directory. Doesn't matter where. <laughs> and it downloads and then it's done. Now you should click open. I clicked cancel. So now I have to go and find it. So I have to open the folder manually. <clears throat> and for some reason, Visual Studio Code hung on me, so I'm going to reboot Visual Studio Code here. Just exit it. Start it up again. Click on Open Folder. Select a folder of the software we just downloaded and that will import it, trust it, then it'll import it. Now platform io.ini is a configuration file. It tells you which board you're using, which framework to use, what the baud rate is, and especially what libraries you need. These libraries are downloaded automatically from the internet. The Linus lab is a very important one for the analog front end. And then these other libraries are for the Wi-Fi. So that's all uh, pre-configured. You don't have to install any more libraries or anything like that. This is this main.cpp is the source code. And once you see, once Platform IO sees that it's in C, it asks if you want to install this extension pack. Yes, you should. Click yes to configure JSON, whatever that means. So this is the main file that needs to be compiled and downloaded or uploaded. It's about 4,000 lines of code. You can look through it if you want. It's not necessary. Don't use the Wi-Fi credentials. I, I, I'll sh explain that later. The other thing that has to get uploaded are all the website files. That's a separate set of files. They're all text files. For example, the index.html file is the primary web page. Uh, the 
.css file is a cascading style sheet file. It tells you the colors and fonts to use. The .js is a JavaScript file. So all these are the website. So these also have to be uploaded. The ESP32 has its own file system. So you upload the, the binary executable, but you also can upload those to a file system. So what we've done now is just click on the little check mark on the bottom to compile this, the code to make sure it works. And I sped that up. It took 32 seconds and it compiled fine. So now we have done that. We need to connect the nanostat to the USB port of the computer using a USB cable. Once you've connected it, in Linux it will automatically configure itself. Because this is a virtual machine, I have to tell the software to let my virtual machine have access to it. But if you're using a regular machine, you won't need to worry about that. Now in Linux, it is mounted as a device and it's given a name. And typically it's T dev, tty, usb, something. So we can list them to make sure we find out which it is. And then once we find out which one that is, we have to give it permission to read and write. Otherwise the operating system won't be able to upload the code. So once that's done, um, we can, let's see, what are we going to do here? First thing we're going to do is erase the flash just in case there's any funny business. So just clean, start from a clean slate, erase all the files off of the ESP32 flash memory. And because we're connected successfully, we can erase them. So now we're starting with a clean, empty flash memory. So press the right arrow on the bottom. That will upload the binary code, which is the firmware. That'll take a few seconds. Success, 31 seconds. So now the binary firmware is uploaded. But we also have to upload the file system image, which is all the website files. Don't, don't do the OTA, that's for Wi-Fi. We're uploading it directly over the USB cable. And all it's doing is uploading those files that the ESP32 will use as this to serve. And now we're done. <clears throat> so everything is complete. We can shut down the virtual machine. And next step, I'll show you how to configure the Nanostat Wi-Fi. Now disconnect it from the computer. All you need to do is power it on. You can use any USB power supply. You can connect it back to the computer to power it. But we're not using the computer USB cable anymore. All we're doing now is going to be through Wi-Fi. So when you first install the firmware, it creates a hotspot, Wi-Fi hotspot, called Nanostat AP. You want to connect to that. And then once you've connected to that, you have to go to this IP address, 192.168.4.1. That will go directly to the Nanostat's web page. And it takes a minute to boot. Once it's booted, you can go in there and... Um, type in the credentials for up to three Wi-Fi networks and it will remember them. So you type it in. This is my local Wi-Fi network. Make sure you spell the name correctly. Type the password. Click Save. And now the Nanostat will reboot. When it reboots, it will come back up and it will be on the local Wi-Fi network. So you need to connect your computer back to the local Wi-Fi network. And then open up a browser and go back to the Nanostat. And this time it's going to have a local IP address. Uh, I've programmed it so that nanostat.local should work. Make sure you put the HTTP colon backslash backslash in front of it. Otherwise... 
it'll search for it on Google or whatever and it takes a minute for the nail stat to reboot if this doesn't work you can check the IP address through your local Wi-Fi router if you have that skill but this should work so it takes a minute to boot it's booted so now you're in business you can do electrochemistry over the wireless internet here's the help menu for further details see this paper happy ecam